first up is David, who's hoping to seal a blockbuster deal for a cinematic pairing. The items I brought in today would look nice in anyone's front room. They come in red, and there's a pair of them. Before facing the dealers, David's pieces will be valued by Simon, who's been an auctioneer for nearly 30 years. Here we are, Sunday night at the London Palladium. Yes! <laughs> Actually, this reminds me of my local cinema when I was a teenager. They, at the back, they had double seats. Oh, right. Yeah. You could take your girlfriend there, and there was nothing in the middle between you to interfere <laughs> with the night's proceedings. So they, you have to book early to get those seats, I tell you. The cinema or the girlfriend. <laughs> On that happy note, let's ask David all about these, shall we? David, nice to meet you. Hello, Nigel. What have you bought us today? Uh, I bought you a set of chairs from my front room, which I bought in more, a Morecambe antique dealer. I paid just under £400. OK. So I use them to sit and watch cinema. To make you feel as though you're in the cinema? Yeah. OK, are they comfortable enough for that? They're comfortable, yes. Yeah. OK, well, shall we ask our expert, Simon, what he thinks about them? Did they tell you who they were by or anything like that? Or? I think it was from a, by a fellow designed by an Italian designer called Peretti, I believe. That's exactly it. That's what I wanted to yeah. hear. Giancarlo Peretti. He worked for Castelli, who were the people that made these chairs. These are their axis seating range. Originally, this design would probably have been from the 50s, that sort of period. But these are later versions of. Date-wise, because of this sort of vinyl-y, plastic -y bit on the bottom, I'm going to say they're probably, what, 1990s-ish? Yeah. Because they're so modern, does that really affect the price? The way the market is at the minute, Nigel, no. No. All they want is the design, the form and the look. Yeah. So it ticks all the boxes in that respect. So it's exactly the same as it would have been made yeah, in the 60s? Nothing's changed at all. No, it's just newer. Yes, yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. I get that. So, David, you paid 400 for them. Yes. What would you like to get for them? I'd like to get more than 400, but willing to take less. Although David's paid retail price, in effect, not that long ago, I think next door in front of dealers, they're probably going to offer him... My personal opinion is round about the 300 is where they're at, but you never know. 300 pounds, does that sound all right? It sounds a good starting point. Good. Now, before you go into the dealer's room, let's ask Simon to sort of sum up so you've got all that knowledge going in. Designed by Peretti, made by Castelli, mid-century design, cinema seats. Go for it. Thanks for bringing it in. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. When you were shuffling along the rows to get back to your seat with your popcorn and your drink... Yeah. ..and then you're trying to push that down with your... I, I often find in the cinema um, that people are late. Mm. They arrive late. Yeah. And the first 20 minutes of any movie is quite important because you've got to get the plot. It sets the whole so thing. So I now say people are late. I say, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't resist it. You know, you're late. Valuation went well. They said slightly less than what I was expecting in the first place, but still a good price. So I'm looking forward to getting into the bidding room and getting that price up high. It's lights, camera, action for David as he enters the bidding room. Could his seats earn rave reviews from furniture buyer JB or curio collector Ian? Hello. 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 Hi. And what's your name? Name's David. Hi, David. Hello, David. Hi, David. Nice to meet you, David. We're all really intrigued as to what is underneath this cover, so... OK. Would you do the honours and, and show us? I'll take it off for you, certainly. Ooh. Oh. oh! What film showing today? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a matinee? Oh dear! Remember the days that you used to look in the corner. There was a little lady with a little light shining on the little. Ice no, Ian. No. You you're going back to the 1930s. Here, I don't even right? know what you're talking about. Yeah, all right, 1930s film. <laughs> Alice Day <Dear> Sim. <laughs> Go on then, JB. What am I sitting on? You are sitting on a Castelli. I believe it was Giancarlo Peretti, was it, for Castelli? Uh, they did a lot of contract furniture for offices. Yeah. Never seen them for cinemas as such. I believe they are airports. And they were sold to me as cinema chairs. I would have said the same thing, yeah. but then when yeah. clever what's it's come No, 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 I'm not necessarily saying that design was 
solely for airports, but they, he designed a lot of airport furniture. So it might be, you might have installed them correctly. Look, I'm sorry designed. now, but now Ian doesn't know whether he's watching the cinema <laughs> or he's going on holiday. Come on. I would say it probably is an airport with that upholstery. Or a waiting room of some description. It doesn't matter, does it? The airport cinema dates, I think, late, probably 70s, I think. The design's from the 60s, but these ones were made in the 90s. Yeah, that's how good the design actually is, though, is the fact that they still produce them year after year, and they're still in fashion. I mean, look at them. They're ideal for home use now, to be quite honest, I think. Couldn't you bolt them in the back of a... A split screen camper van or something like that. They'd look I mean, amazing, that would look wouldn't they? Amazing. Yeah. They'd look fantastic. Look I could bolt them in the back of my van and you could come out with me for a day. I could. Where are we going? Wherever you want. Malaga. Airport, yeah. I'm a bit jealous. You two are planning your little day trips away together, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Two seats. <laughs> two seats. Yeah. yeah. Come with us, James. Where's Aidy sitting? Oh, I don't know about him. You'll have to leave him. You can drive. Hey, you turncoat. <laughs> <laughs> So before we start bidding, what else did Simon tell you about the shares? Uh, Simon said that the pair of them were highly desirable. They've been designed by Pareti Design. They really can be put anywhere into any room in the house. They're timeless and they'll always be in fashion. And he's right. So on that note, he wants to kick it off. The dealers seem taken with a pair of chairs. Over to David to see if he can sell at, or even above, expert Simon's £300 valuation. I'm not too silly. I'm going to start the bidding off at fifty pounds. Okay. A hundred pounds. A hundred and ten. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and thirty. One forty. One fifty. Come on, you can go more than that. You can sit in that and think you're going on a holiday these days. That's true. One sixty then. One seventy. I'm out. Okay. David, I'm with Melissa. I'm going to watch the battle because I think there's going to possibly be one. <laughs> I like it, but I'm not that keen on the fabric. So are you out? Yeah. Go 180. I'll go 190. 200 quid. <laughs> I'm out at 200. So you've got 200 pound on the table, David. 200. Yeah. It wasn't what I was hoping to get. Was it not? No. No. What's your magic figure? Where, where's your Where's your limit? Probably 240. I could do 200, I don't think I'd go any more. Would you go 220? No. Oh, I'm, I'm, I am firm on 200. No. no. Can't take the money. No. 210. Last Two, tenner. 220. No. Go on, I'll give you 220, actually. Ian, JB stole these from under your nose. You can't go on holiday now. I know. I'm going to be sat having a wet weekend in Weston in the back of my van. James. You're a hard man. I'm out. What do you say at 220? 220's fine. Hey, happy day. Brilliant. When you had the valued with Simon, what did he say they were worth? Said 300 upwards. Did he? Wow. Gosh. Wow. I had a good time in the dealer's room. The dealer's reaction was good. They all thought the chairs were pretty cool. They loved the design, and in the end, it was down to GB making the last minute offer. Not for the amount I wanted for them. He paid 220. Uh, I still see that as a good deal, as I don't have any use for them anymore. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. Great Thank to you. Meet you. Thanks Good to see you, mate. It'll go towards a holiday for my daughter Alice up in the Scottish Highlands, where we can see some proper snow. There you go, mate. Skeggy. Skegness. <laughs> you mean Skeggy? Skeggy. Not on a plane? No. Oh, are they a car park seat? Yeah. You're waiting for the bus? In my camper. The minibus for Skegness is about to arrive. Please get your bags ready. Thank you. Next to take on the dealers is Angela, with a star-studded souvenir from a cult classic. The item I brought in today is a lovely piece of memorabilia. It's associated with a film I acted in in 1968, and uh, it's very special. This has made my day. <laughs> so that's mine as well. Yeah. Angela, hello. Hi. How nice to meet you. Likewise. And thank you for bringing this poster in. I understand that you were in the film. That's right. Fantastic. Well, tell me all about that. Oh, well, it was one of the first jobs I ever got. One was terribly excited, although one was used for decorative uh, reasons, as they might say. I just love being on the set, meeting yeah. everybody, Kenneth Williams, Barbara, yeah. and so on and so forth. Did they give you this, or did you have to buy this poster? No, there's a sweet story attached to this. 
We were always sort of having reunions in the good old days. Yeah. I went with uh, the late Jeremy Lloyd. I used to know him really well. Well, yes. Off we beetled to lunch at Pinewood, and then later uh, the auction came up, and he was sweet enough to to buy it and gift it to oh, me. Oh, that is so generous. Uh, yes, yes. So it's got a special place oh, uh, in, uh, yeah, in my heart. Because he was a very, very close friend of mine, Jeremy. You've had it hanging up at home. Yes. Yes, and now it's time to sell it, maybe. Maybe, yes. yes. To find out all about it. The first thing I notice, uh, Angela, is, is the condition. Absolutely mint. Oh, thank you. You know, colours are as bright as the day it was printed, really. The first thing I always look for is the printer. Yes. And that's Berry of Bradford. You couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better name. They were the ones that did all the film posters going back to Ten Commandments in the 1920s, right up to Flash Gordon in the 80s and beyond. These were the ones you'd have seen actually in the cinema. So this isn't a, a reprint for you to just hang on your wall at home. This is the real, the real thing. So what, what year did Kyber actually come out then, Angela? Do you remember? I believe it was filmed in 68, so probably what? 69. I would 69. think 69, yeah. yes. Pretty, this is so perfect of the, of the period. Of the period, yeah. yeah. And they're very collectible, aren't they? A huge collector's market. Whether you're a carry-on fan or not, I mean, the imagery to start with is yeah. just is so eye-catching, isn't it? Well, I mean, you've got everything going for it, Angela, honestly. I can't, I know I keep going on about condition, but it's really important when we're talking about movie posters. When you get in there, when they know the connection, I, I honestly think it will fly. Just as a movie poster, I see it at 100, 150 pounds. But with your connection and the whole story, I could see it doing easily double that. Yeah. Is that good news? I was expecting minimum of a thousand pounds. Were you? Yeah. Mm. Well, we, we just don't know. We, don't, we just don't know. We just don't know. So the key points to take into the bidding room are, it's absolutely mint condition. Mint. We've got one of the most recognised film franchises in this country, if not the world. In your favour, Angela, that they're probably never going to get another chance to buy this with the connection. It's how desperate, how keen they are to own it. I'd go in there and dazzle them, which I'm sure you can do. Very good luck. Thank you. OK. Bye. See you on the other side. Simon valued it. I thought on the low side. A little disappointing, but things can change. Hello. hello. Hi. Hello, hello. What's your name? My name is Angela. We are very intrigued. So would you like to whip it off? I would indeed. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> that is cool. Wow. As soon as you read, carry on. You just don't read any further, do you? Because no. it's just... Iconic. Best Thank you. thing yeah. ever. So where did you get this from? Well, uh, I'm an actress and I was actually in the film. This was gifted to me. So you was actually in this uh, in film? In the film, I think that's me, I I'm not sure. Yeah. And in other Carry On films? Yes. Right. So you have actually yes. worked with people like Kenneth Williams and all that crap. That's right. Oh wow. my goodness. Ah. Wow. I'm going to destroy the atmosphere in this room you because don't I don't have a clue what that he film is. No I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. I honestly don't, and I'm so sorry because it is obviously don't a massive, it. massive film back in the no, 70s. The viewing it has is. become the yeah, carry-on, yes, yeah. yes. like the Hammer Horrors. But really. what an amazing movie poster that is. I mean, it does look in remarkable condition considering the age. It's just stunning, isn't it? But of course it's been protected by the glass, hasn't it? Yes. I'm assuming this would have been a cinema poster. I think so. Yeah, so yes. when you go to the cinemas, you see the glazed sort of box section. Yes. And it would advertise the film that was sort of coming soon or on now. That's right. The first one I ever saw at the cinema was Carry On Camping. My mum and dad took me to it. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Barbara Windsor, you know. Oh, it's great. gosh. Absolutely stunning. I love it because it's so bright and vibrant, but we know it's the real thing. There is no evidence of any creases and of ever having it been rolled up. But if you it's watch just... the film, it'll crease you watching it. I well. think it would, yeah. because honestly, I love that sort of humour. I love Airplane, I love Life of Brian, all the Monty Python, etc. Yeah. So, yeah, so I do feel like I would enjoy this, but I've just You would like it, it Jay. I will I buy you the box set, because you need to watch it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't believe I've not watched it. Right, Angela, let's put everybody out of their misery. Let's yes. start the bidding. The movie poster has been valued at 100 to 150 pounds. But Angela is looking for nearer to 1,000. 
So will her unique story help her sell for anywhere near that price? I'm going to start it at £150. £200. £250. £260. £300. I heard you guys had deep pockets. <laughs> but we got short arms as well. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Angela, I'm going to go to £350. £400. £450. £500. Double it. £550. I'll go £600. £650. Come on, either you want it or you don't. <laughs> I'll tell you where I am. I'm out at 650 but thank you for bringing it in. I'm going to join Samantha as well, because I think you've got two people, especially in the room, where it means quite a bit more to them than it does to me. Okay. So I'm out, but thank you. It's All been right. a pleasure to meet you as well. I think I'm out. Yes. But thank you so much. It's been a delight to meet you. Oh, it's been my pleasure thank coming you. here. So, Angela, it's at 6.50 with me. That is going to be my last bid. What are you thinking? I feel it's uh, worth probably double that, and it does have extremely sentimental attachments for me, as I'm sure you appreciate. Mm. I just love how much this means to you, and I know if, if I was in your situation, and I'd worked with these people, then blimey, I'd, you know. <clears throat> and right at this point, I don't want to take it off you. Angela, I'm, I'm going to say I'm out. But I hope we talk again about it, because I really do love it. I'm in the same boat. I really, really would like it. I just can't get up to that figure, and like Katie's touched on, see how much it means to you. So. At the moment, Ian, I'm out. Fair enough. It's been a pleasure meeting you all. You've made us all very you. excited. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for bringing it in. It's been amazing to see. Bless Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank, you so Thank, much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, uh, all the dealers seemed uh, interested, but they didn't quite uh, reach the figure I had in mind. They went to 650. I feel it was probably worth a little bit more, and I turned it down. I hope eventually to give it a very, very good home. Well, what an amazing poster with an amazing story behind it, and what an amazing lady. And I think we've been really lucky to meet her. Definitely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Third in is David, with something he hopes will make the dealer's head spin. They're made of wood. Children would have played with them. They're very tactile, they're, they're, they're nice to hold, and they're really good fun. If they're not a collection of wooden pairs... No. <laughs> they are... I think they... I know what they are, yes. Well, David, what have you bought in today? A Victorian spinning tops. Where did you find them? They were given to me by a friend. He, they, were, they were her husband's. Right. Um, he used to play with them upstairs. He wasn't allowed outside with them, him and his brother. He used to play with them upstairs in the attic room. Well, it's very handy because Simon, our expert, is here today, of course, and he is also an expert at, with spinning tops. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you do? No, I, I think he's spot on with dates. I think they are Victorian ones, so 1880s, 90s, that kind of vintage. Right. The beauty's in the simplicity, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. we've just got this little sort of steel rod coming out there, which obviously was your little bit of pivot. That was it we'd be balancing on. And then obviously you'd wind your bit of boot lace or bit of string, whatever you got, and then set him like that and just pull and so hope it stayed on the table. And kids would be mesmerised by that yeah. thing, spinning. And it would spin a long time, <laughs> I seem to remember. <laughs> Yeah. I always remember as, as a child as well, the temptation was to sort of just nudge them a bit whilst they were spinning. <laughs> and they start wobbling. Yeah. These were, I think they were called sort of, was it whip, whip and tops, these were called. We used to pull the... And you could put any bit of string in there, really. Yeah, a bit of boot lace or whatever Boot lace, had. yeah. You're in for nothing, because they cost you nothing. No. Nope. How much were you looking to sell them for? Probably about £60 for about the £60. Lot. Pounds. Well, I think David's got a... Great little collection to take next door. As I say, I only usually see them individually, so to get a nice little group of eight is great. Because they're so simple in their form, but they're good fun, I can see you getting... 
60 to 80 pounds, maybe even a little bit more. Before you go into the dealer's room, I'm just going to ask Simon to sum up so you have all that knowledge to take in to the dealer's room when you sell them. Obviously, push the fact that you've got a great range. You know, it's a ready-made collection for somebody. Late 19th century, fun, simple. And AD, I think, target him. Yes. Right. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Thanks for bringing them in. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. And you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Simon was really excited, the fact that it's a, a whole collection. So, yeah, I'm really excited about going into the bidding room, armed with all the, the information I've got, and get as much money as I can. Hello. Uh, hello. 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 Hello there. And what's your name? It's David. David, what are they? They're spinning tops, Victorian spinning tops. Oh. oh. OK. Oh, my goodness, look at them. I have to say, these are great. I mean, I've never, ever seen anything like it. They're just absolutely superb. Dave, do you know how these work? I believe you wrap the, the lace round it and then hold the top and pull the lace and it spins oh, round. Man. Do you know what dates they are roughly? Well, Simon told me they're late 1800s. How are you getting on, AD? I'm, I'm all right. Stop it. It's getting a bit late. Shut up. Keeping an eye on time, you know. What? What are you doing, AD? I don't What's know what I'm doing, Dad. Can you not just spin them without the shoelace? I feel like it's a shoelace that's causing you a bit of an one, issue. I've got this one done. Oh. I've got this one done. Look at this one. Oh, I see. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> yeah, AD won't be buying these. <laughs> no, no, it's point down. This, this way? Oh, you'll definitely need a lace, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't Rubbish. work that way. Without a lace, Rubbish. but it could spin this way. Being Victorian, these will have all been hand-tooled and you can imagine them making them, can't you? And oh, absolutely, taking yeah, great yeah. care into making yeah. just a child's toy, which doesn't really happen anymore, so... OK, guys, are we ready to start the bidding? The Victorian wooden spinning tops are valued at 60 to 80 pounds. Time for David to get haggling. 40 pounds. I'll go 50. There's eight of them. OK, then I'll go 80. It's better. 100. 110. 120. 130. Mm hmm. Knew you'd like these as well. 140. Ah. 150. 160. I'm liking it. <laughs> You're getting a bit of a sweat on, AD. I mean, it's a bit of a spin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you know that I'm out. Right. 170. Any more? 175. 180. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to bid on this and I'm out. 190. And that will be my last bid. Sorry. Right. Anyone else any higher? To be honest, my limit was really 150. And I've gone over that, so I think... I'm out at that. Do you know, mate, I'm out too. So, David, I'm in at 190. Yeah, brilliant. I'll accept your offer. We have a deal? We do. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very well much. Yes! We'll all be having this little competition tomorrow, won't we? OK, David, so obviously you know what we've paid you. What did Simon value the collection at? 60 to 80. 60 to 80. <laughs> you and your toys. Yeah. 60 to 80 was that, yeah, AD? That was what just... did you pay? Yeah. 60 to 80. <laughs> 60 to 80. And you paid one... 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 90. 90, wasn't it? 10 pounds short yeah. of 200. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't even play the game. <laughs> <laughs> AD bought the spinning tops for 190 pounds in the end. He gave me an extra 10 pounds, which is going towards Farley Hospice which I'm really pleased about. It's more than I expected, so I'm really, really chuffed. Should I have a little play? Trouble is, you've got to get quite a velocity up, haven't you? A what? A velocity. <laughs> that is exactly not how the Victorians used to do it. <laughs> See, that's how they used to do it. <laughs> hey, did they cost you £200? <laughs> and now look at them. They're all over the floor. You've scattered them over the floor like a spoilt child. <laughs> Did I really play that for them? <laughs> Even I'm shocked. 
<laughs> Next up is Christine with a very peculiar piece. The item that I bought in today is ceramic. It stands about 11 inches high. It was standing in my living room, but I decided to put it away because it freaked people out. It's a bit scary. I think it's one of those things that people would fall in love with or run away from. I'm not running away from it. No, not me. Christine. Hello, Nigel. How long have you had this little beauty? Um, just over 20 years. Have you? Yeah. I got her for about three quid. <laughs> wow. Ooh. I mean, I fell in love with her as soon as I saw her. Mm. And I was going to use her as a plant pot and put a cactus inside, but I decided not to because otherwise it would have ruined the inside of the plant pot. I've had it stored for the last few years because some people find it really spooky. Do they? Yes, they do. But the more you look at it, the more you sort of fall in love with no, her. No, I love her, yeah. And now you're moving on. I'm downsizing, oh, yeah. so... And I'm you're curious about it, probably. I really am. They're commonly known, surprisingly enough, as head planters. OK. So you were right putting a plant in. Right. right putting a, a, ca a, a cactus in. But, no, I agree with you, because that can cause all sorts of problems inside with water damage yes. and all that kind of thing. So you, you did the sensible thing, actually. Yeah. But I don't know whether you ever noticed underneath, but we have got a little set of um, initials underneath. Yes, I did notice, but I couldn't quite make it out, You couldn't? Well, it's, no. um, it's by a chap called Andre Luray. A L. He worked for Sidmouth Pottery, which was Devon. Okay. And they closed in '72. Right. So this is slap bang '60s. I have seen these uh, head planters before. They do turn up very rarely. Each one is sort of hand decorated, so there would be slight variations in every one. The shape. There would have been more than one of those done. If you look at their makeup, it's very sort of Bieber of that period, yes, isn't it? It is. It yeah. smacks of that '60s vibe again, doesn't totally, it? Totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mini skirt. Shade yeah. boots. OK, um, are they collectible? They are indeed, yeah. yeah. No, this, this will have a, re a really good following. They don't turn up that often, as I say, over probably 20, 30 years. I've, I've probably had maybe two or three of them to sell, so, you know, very rarely that you see them. She's worth, actually, more than people might think, you know, because I, I think it's a fantastic bit of 1960s art pottery. I'm going to rein myself in a little bit because of the the chip on the base. I say with confidence you can expect between, well, between 50 and 80 pounds, definitely. Okay. It's not a bad um, profit, really. No, it's not really, no. No, are you happy with that? <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, up to a point. Up to a point. <laughs> what, what, say you get 80, what would you do with the money? Take myself out for dinner, I think. Just yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you wouldn't invite me? You can come if you want. Oh, well, I, I would, thank you very much. <laughs> At last, an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> now, before you go into the uh, dealer's room, yeah. I, I want Simon to sum up, so you go in there armed with all this expert knowledge. OK. Simon. Andre Larey, so remember that name. Sidmouth Pottery, 1960s. A great example of ceramic work of that period. And they'll all fall in love with it. Yeah. Christy, that will give you a head start. Anyway, have fun. Thanks for bringing it in. I've That's never okay. seen anything You're like welcome. it in my life. No, 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 I hadn't no. either, so... So I think you have great success. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Thank you. The valuation went really well. Um, you know, I learned a lot of interesting things in there. I'm hoping that it'll start a bidding war that will drive the price up because it's such a unique and rare object. Hello. 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 Oh, my goodness. Well, what is your name? <laughs> my name is Christine. What on earth <laughs> is that? It's terrifying. A lot of people do say it that. It is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. That's why I don't sort of, like, put it on show at the house. It's been stored for quite some time because of the grandkids. I don't blame you. Where on earth did he get that? <laughs> I was at a boot fair in Dulwich, and it was three quid. I'll give you a fiver for it, then. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, Christine, you're at this car boot, you've got up at six in the morning <laughs> and you're being drawn towards a stall... Yes. ..full of normal, normal, normal items and that was in the middle. It was in the middle. Why? Because I just find her fascinating. Ian, you could put an ostrich egg, egg in it. What, for my bre for your breakfast? So what's it made of? It's ceramic. Can I ask what Simon made of it? He loved it, and he also knew who the artist was. Really? Did he? Yes, immediately. Andre Zorat. 
So, how old is that? Mid 60s, so banging retro. Michelle, as much as it's a bit weird, a candle It's yeah. calming, isn't it? It's quite nice. Does it suit me? Yeah, in a way. <laughs> she's almost like she's put a makeup on, gone out in the rain, and it's just gone everywhere. She's got she, panda eyes. She has got panda eyes. <laughs> a bit I like me on, in the rain. Yeah. Was the little yeah. chip on it when you bought it? Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. It's very My... thin porcelain, isn't it? It is. Isn't it's it? Like a bisque yeah. type. Yes. I know what you mean, though. You know what it, I mean? It looks better as you get close. Yeah, it does, yeah. Still terrifying. Look, it's drawing you all in. Yeah, <laughs> it is. You're it's right. doing something. What was it originally made for? It was a plant pot. Oh, right. Really? She'd look even weirder with a plant in, wouldn't she? Yeah, Imagine she just would. like a big old cactus coming out of yeah, her head. Yeah, cool. um, but it looked like hair. Spider plant. Yeah. We're going to find out who's the most bonkers in the room. Um, so I think we ought to start the bidding. After some initial doubts, the dealers are warming to the ceramic head. So can Christine beat Simon's 50 to 80 pound valuation? I'll start at 10 pounds. Well, you're in profit already, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> From 20 years ago, yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. 15 pounds. No. 30 pounds. No. 35 pounds. No. <laughs> Come on, everybody. 40 pounds. No. 45 pounds. No. 60 pounds. No, you thank might. you. We're miles off. £70. Pounds. No, thank you. £80. Pounds. No, thank you. £150. What? No. 150. 150 160 No. Wow. If I could have done some research, I'd have bought her. But I think I'm completely gambling at this. Oh. Really, I'm gambling. 180 You're Is getting close. Am I? I don't think I want to get any closer. <laughs> <laughs> any advances over there? No, I don't think so. I'm going out, I'm afraid. You're out. Anyone else? Not for me, thank you. I'm out on this. You've got quite a good deal there, I think, with Ian. So we're at £180. I'm having a balmy one, cos I haven't got a clue. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand? I'll accept it. Fantastic. Hey! 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 Right, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. What did Simon value it at? He valued her at from 50 to 80. <laughs> I tell you what, it needs some research because yeah. it'll, it is worth what somebody will pay for it. It is. And if you get somebody locked into that kind of macabre... Yes. ..it's going to go. Yeah. Like you were. <laughs> 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 Work for me. Oh, it was really exciting and I really, really enjoyed it. Ian bought the pot. Uh, he really loved it and he was drawn to it. Considering I only paid three quid for it, I'm really happy with the profit that I made today. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. I'm going out for dinner. Ian, you'll just buy anything. I can't deny <laughs> that. I think I've just proved it. <laughs> <laughs> Last in is Duncan, with a piece that tells of bad habits from days gone by. The item I brought in today is uh, silver, small enough to fit in the palm of your hand or in your, in your pocket. Uh, it's just over 100 years old, made in 1904 in Birmingham. Well, this is a box. It is. And, and it's silver. It is indeed. Well, let's ask Duncan all about it. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Duncan. Thanks for coming in and bringing this pretty little box with you. Tell me all about it. Where did you find it? Yes, I found it at a house in Crewe. I was visiting there looking at a stamp collection. I noticed the corner of my eye, the glint of uh, silver in the corner, which uh, drew me across there. And I thought, what a lo lovely uh, piece. You're like a little magpie. Yeah. Glint of silver in your eye. Yes, there was sunshine in yeah, Crewe. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, um, what did you pay for it? I paid £85. £85. Pounds £85. It. OK. Yes, yeah, lovely little lot, isn't it? Yeah. Classic silver cigarette case in the late Victorian style, which is how we term that one, without even looking at hallmarks, I can tell it's from that period, simply because of this style of decoration, which is those classic Victorian swirls. And then the classic shield shape cartouche on the, on the cover there with the little presentation. And I can see the date on there, 1905. Solid silver? Solid silver, absolutely. Um, and still retaining its little elastic holders there as well. 
People actually buy these now, and they're, they're quite handy for putting uh, either calling cards or yeah. business cards. And I notice you've got a couple of little extras rattling about inside, which is yes. quite nice. So we've got a, a little silver threepenny bit, which is, again, that solid silver, that one. And then this is just a little bit of brass, but we've got an image of Christ on the front and then, and then the Lord's Prayer, very tiny. <laughs> for people with very good eyesight. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh, I suppose, who, who was the box given to? Does it say on it? It, it says on it, it's a, it's a reverend, and it was presented to him by his uh, Sunday school uh, members, presumably as a token of gratitude or, or long or, service. Or, or goodbye. Or goodbye, yes. exactly, yes. Which is typical yes. of the reason for those silver cigarette boxes. They were often presentation or gift items. I can see the hallmarks there yeah. uh, on both sides, which is important because... Essentially, we have two pieces of silver. I think it's sort of around about three ounces, so it's sort of 50, 55 pounds, somewhere around there. I, I think the dealers will go to round about, probably around the 80, 90, which is your money back. Right. You might make a few pounds on it, yeah. but I think you've paid a fair market price, to be honest. Points to take next door, late Victorian, beautiful original condition. It's just a nice bit of silver, so they'll all have a good go at it for you. Great. OK. Good luck. Thank you very much. I think you do really well. Thank Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Would you have cleaned it? No, as fine as it is. I would have cleaned it to within an inch of its life. <laughs> it would be gleaming and glistening there. But no, no. Blinded. Yeah, it was great to meet uh, Simon today and draw on his uh, vast experience o over many years. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going into the bidding room and uh, achieving... Uh, a good price. Hello. And what's your name? My name's uh, Duncan. Nice to meet you, Duncan. Hello, Duncan. I'm going to be the first one. That's a look before Ian does. <laughs> Very nice. Obviously, it's a, it's a Vesta case. Hallmark silver. Really, really beautiful detail into their classic sort of Victorian. Probably 1890, something the, like that. Uh, the inscription on the front's got 1905, so you're there or thereabouts. The hallmark, which uh, is on the inside, it's on both sides. It's got the, the anchor symbol, which uh, shows it was made in uh, Birmingham. Now, I love it. When it came and I thought, oh, no. But I must spend hundreds of pounds a year on books of stamps, and they go in the van, they go in the car, and I lose them. Then I want another stamp, so I buy another book. That's going to be my stamp holder bookie thingy. Hang on. Yeah. You've not bought it yet, mate. No, no, no. This is going to come home with me. <laughs> Calm down. Just to warn you, this is coming home with me. I like it. You might have to pay a pretty penny with that, then. It's really nice. I like the inscriptions on the front. Stop it. So it says, presented to Reverend G.W. Skeen? From Bartholomew Sunday School. Bartholomew School. Barth yes. I used to go to that school, so I need it. Live. Did you? <laughs> I think I'd use it for little bits of jewellery and stuff. Because it is nice. It's really, really pretty. I sell every one of these that I get for business cards these days. But do you know the nice thing I like about that is look at the shape. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? You put it in your pocket and it'll fold the contours. Slightly curved. Yes. That's a quality thing. It's going to curve to your body and it belongs in my pocket. Do you see how well it fits, AD? <laughs> it's made to measure. OK, you lot, let's start the bidding. The dealers are intrigued by the silver case. So can Duncan reach or even exceed the 80 to 90 pound valuation? 30 quid. Is that all? <laughs> 40 pound. No, you're way adrift. <laughs> I'm going to go 70. Quite a bit to go yet. 75. But I'll go to 100, cos I really like it. So it's certainly great to get into three figures, but uh, I think we need uh, some higher bids than that. 100 quid is my max on that, so... I'm out. To tell you the truth, it's a bit small for me. I like big lumps of furniture. Also, I don't actually like the presentation thing on there. That, because you can't then sell it to someone to present it to someone else to give it to someone else the gift. So to me, that actually devalues it a little bit. £100 is about a f pretty fair price off 80. Oh, Duncan, what a nasty man. I was helping you there. <laughs> We're <laughs> sitting in tears now. Just when I was beginning to lie you. AD's not having this. I want it. 105. 110, Duncan. 
Ignore him. That's a little bit like more like it. We want noughts on the end, not fives. I, I'm out. Go on, E. Don't let AD beat you there. Come on, Cinders. Get where are green you? Get green one out. <laughs> Cinders. I shall go to the ball at 120. 130. Oh. Ooh, now, we're, now we're talking. Get some momentum going now. I think I've topped out, mate. I'm out. But thanks so much. So, Duncan, we're at 130 with me. I'll use it. Love it, treasure it forever. So, do we have a deal at one thirty? What about one one fifty? I'll walk away now. One fifty. Go on, AD. Got Go a, on. an excellent piece there. I don't want to do one fifty, but I would do one forty just to give you a bit of a sweetener. But then I stop. I'll take it one forty. Hey. You will. Hey. Fantastic. Hey. Brilliant. Brilliant. So Duncan sells the silver case for £140, well above Simon's top valuation of £90. Yeah, it's been a, an excellent day today. Aid bought the cigarette case uh, in the end at 140. Really pleased uh, with what I achieved today. Got some great news to tell the wife when I get home. It's probably too much money. I don't care. I just loved it. As soon as I felt it, I just loved it. It's and I, I wouldn't have stopped. I'd have gone further, probably wrong, but I yeah. just really liked it.